Welcome to the Dry Bones Ministries podcast, where we strive to provide great preaching and teaching so that listeners will discover or rediscover the goodness, truth, and beauty of our Catholic faith. If you are interested in supporting the work we are doing, visit us at drybonespgh.org or follow us on social media at drybonespgh. Thanks for joining us. We hope that you're inspired, uplifted, and encouraged. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Dry Bones Ministries special podcast series on the Litany of Trust. My name is Father Adam Potter, and today is day 26, where we pray the petition that my life is a gift. Jesus, I trust in you. If you've made it this far, then praise the Lord, and God bless you for your perseverance and continuing to work your way through. 30 days is long, as I've commented before. It might not seem all that long from a certain perspective. And then to get to this point where, oh, how many weeks, how many days? But this is good. At at this point, if if you're with us, I've been doing, um, uh, what is it, six days for five weeks. And so we're really coming into the last week here, this last stretch of reflections. And I want to invite you to consider how you're going to conclude, how you're going to end this retreat. I made mention of it at the very beginning, but I want to repropose that you would end intentionally. Uh, uh, that day 30 would be a real endpoint goal, or maybe day 31 or 32, whatever it is. You know, that like that, that there would be a, a goal, and that goal that I proposed to you would be preparing as you would for a an, an indulgence of of some kind right the church offers us different opportunities to cooperate with faith and god's grace with opportunities given to us through the church whether it's um, praying the the rosary publicly reading scripture for 30 minutes if it's praying the stations of the cross if it's making a pilgrimage if it's um, any number of different actions or uh, pious practices. The church accompanies that practice, that act of faith, with grace. And it's not to be seen as something magical, but to be seen as something that affirms that what we're doing is good for our salvation, cooperating with how God desires us to respond. And so some of the qualifications for that is that we would be in a state of grace. So to make an act of confession. It's typically eight days before or after that practice is done, that thing, whatever the action is. Also that we would go to Mass and receive Holy Communion on that day that we do that that practice. And that we would also make uh, a prayer for our Holy Father, usually in our Father, Hail Mary, Glory Be, suffice and that then we would do that thing and that thing that i'm encouraging you to do is to pray the litany of trust like we've been doing for the last 30 days and to pray it wholeheartedly with the confidence that by going through this retreat and opening up our hearts to the holy spirit speaking to us inviting us to let go and to more fully dive into the very heart of God, that the Lord is working, and that that even in a conclusive way as we come to the end, we can make uh, or offer one last chance for the Lord to really come invading into our, our hearts, breaking through those walls of fear and insecurity and infusing within us deep abiding trust. So that's the word of encouragement. Sorry, I think that was took longer than I was expecting, but yeah, you get the idea and the, that you might plan ahead for when you're going to end and what, is there a special mass that you can go to, um, a special time or a place after mass that you can go to, light a candle, pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament and pray this litany uh, with your whole heart. So today, let's look at the this idea that my life is a gift. Oh, this, this goes deep. This goes right to the core of the fabric of reality to be able to look at the way that God 
made us, how he made all of creation. And as we've already really looked at, we get to this heart of the reality that God created everything out of nothing, out of his love and sheer goodness. He created, willed that there would be something. And this comes to as a real reflection of who he is, that out of his own goodness, it is diffusive, it is overflowing, it desires to be shared. You can relate to this, right? Can you relate to seeing this incredible uh, sunrise? I'm not that much of a morning person, but I remember being on a retreat and showing up uh, last minute for a, a breakfast, and there's this whole group of people that just came crashing into the cafeteria there and like, oh my goodness, you guys, you missed out. There was this incredible sunrise. You had to see it. And it's like, it was kind of obnoxious. You're like, come on. I, like, I just woke up and I'm trying to, but actually you couldn't help but like, wait, what? How was it? Because just their, like their joy of seeing this incredible sunrise was such that they had to tell you about it. And I couldn't help but be curious about waking up early the next morning. I wasn't that curious because I slept in again. But it, that's goodness, overflowing, desires to share itself. And this is God. This is who we know God to be, that he is perfect goodness to overflow and desire to share it, which in a beautiful way is how we come to understand why there is anything at all. Why is there something rather than nothing? And from the Genesis account, we go through and we just see God creating effortlessly. Let there be light and there was life, light. And just by the mere effortless voice, his breath, light comes in, scattering the, the darkness. And then he creates the, the waters and separates it from the earth. And notice, as you've probably heard the creation story in Genesis chapter 1 many, many times, it's just amazing that at the end of everything, God claims it as good, identifies it as good. And this is not inconsequential or just secondary. This is at the heart of understanding the fabric of reality. The creation is good. And as we're talking about this petition today, that even this creation is a gift. It didn't have to be here. And yet it was willed, chosen by God to be here. And so from all of creation to the living animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, God comes, as the church teaches us, to the crown, the culmination of creation. You and me made male and female in his own image and likeness. And whereas everything else that he's created God says, and it was good. When he gets to the creation of humanity, he says, and it was very good. Very good. Oh, is this how you and I see ourselves being very good? This is where when we come to really appreciate creation, we get a glimpse into who God is, wanting to share this life with us, wanting to share a uh, uh, participation in the very goodness and happiness and joy that is him, that is, this is what heaven, right? This is what like heaven is. It's the perfect participation union in complete happiness, divine life that we might share in and that our, our hearts are made for this, made in his image and likeness. We're created to be able to receive this divine life and to respond in this total gift of self with our own gift of self. We're made for infinite love and our hearts will continue to long for that and settle for nothing less. Although sadly through sin, many of us do settle for a lot less uh, for the pleasures, entertainments, and distractions of this world and uh, trying to fill, as you've maybe heard it before, this infinite God-shaped hole in our heart with many other different objects of, yeah, more money, more power, more pleasure, more popularity or fame. And we come to see just how empty that is. Is this how you and I see our, our lives as a gift, as being good? 
And we've talked before about our own value or worth, but this is really seeing that my life is a gift. My life, my engagement with all of life, such that every single thought that I have is a gift. Every single word that I speak is a gift. That next beat of my heart is a gift, you know? Do we see it like that? Or do we see it more rather as a, as a burden? She, Sister Faustine in this book gives a number of different considerations with how we experience life and our own life. And one of the things she really draws us to in the opening paragraph is our experience of not being able to receive our life as a gift having to do with the fact that we didn't choose it. <laughs> Instead, we uh, just found ourselves here, which is a really interesting insight. I, I know from talking to a lot of people who have really struggled with anxiety and depression that that there can kind of be this resentment of here I am experiencing this life that is a great misery and suffering and, and, you know, add in the psychological, emotional reality of depression. There can be such a darkness where I'm not really able to see at all the light and, and the goodness that is me or that is this world. And so there can really be this cynical I didn't choose to be here. Why am I here at all? Why do I need to be here? And you can see how that can go down a very, very dark path quickly. And this is where it has everything to do with understanding the goodness of God, of why he created us. And really, this is kind of the where we've touched on before. Again, that God would allow for this freedom that you and I have as a necessary part of love that also in a very vulnerable way, God opens up the possibility that you and I would reject that love and actually allow for sin and brokenness to come into this world that God did not create sin. He did not create suffering, pain, or death, but it's a natural consequence to us rejecting this full gift of our life and to live in that relationship with him. Oh, so how do we see our life? How do we see even suffering? That, that by seeing my life as a gift, I actually come to see it all as something given to me by God. And that he would even allow for suffering means that God in his infinite wisdom recognizes that by permitting suffering, that there is, or this is always like so hard to, you know, to articulate that, that by allowing for there to be suffering, there can be a greater experience of life and even a deeper experience of the fact that life is a gift. That we can experience the gift, this freely given good thing, not only from just the positive aspect of like, wow, this is a lot of value. This is a lot of worth, but can also be experienced by the Oh, how I miss that, how I've squandered that, that gift, thinking about the prodigal son who comes to his moment of conversion, eating amongst the swine, the pigs in this trough. And there he's able to recognize the gift that he's squandered. The story of Chiara Luce Bodano is amazing. Her her life and her acceptance of this aggressive bone cancer and the reality that she was going to die is one of the most inspiring acceptances um, I've heard of. That she didn't just distract herself from it. She didn't just uh, infuse it with some false, false optimism, but she really accepts the full weight of what's been given to her. And after coming out from her room in prayer, she has this great line. If you want it, I want it too. If you want it, I want it too. Right here, this is such an incredible insight, right? A great example. If you want it, Lord, if you've allowed for this, if you've created, permitted this suffering, this cancer, this limited experience of life, 
then I want it too. And that perspective changes everything. Sister Faustina says it like this, is my life being taken from me or will I give it? That's a whole different way of looking at my life, like, right? Um, seeing the job that I have or the responsibilities that I have with different relationships, children, grandchildren, seeing the different expectations that other people have of me, seeing even just the limitations that I have of only being able to do a certain amount of things, only being able to stay awake for a certain amount of time, um, maybe getting tired easily, hungry easy, grumpy and cranky, speaking for a friend, <laughs> like those could be really tough. And so are these all things that limit or obstruct or suffocate me? Or are they opportunities for me to love and accepting just that, that gift and that opportunity to love in the limitations? Beautiful, like just, the, yeah, the difference of, of that perspective. It really seems like when we get down to trust that um, it's only by accepting my life as a gift that I can give it away. And the last paragraph on page 167, Sister Faustina says, if God desired her love in this way, then she would give it. Kiara knew her life was a gift. So that's the, the order that I'm a very logical person. So that's helpful for me that, that I can't give my life away, right? Accepting the, the circumstances that inhibit me or in, afflict me. I can't embrace that and give my life away despite that. If I haven't first come to the full acceptance, acknowledgement that my life is a gift. I so appreciate St. Augustine as a real authentic searcher of the, the meaning of his life. Um, yeah, so he has a couple incredible works. And, and one is the City of God, where he really dives into the, just the reality of God creating in goodness. And this leads Augustine to conclude, um, here I found this quote right from um, this work, The City of God. He says, the meaning of this, of this, the fact that God creates in goodness, is that there is only one cause for the creation of the world, the purpose of God's goodness in the creation of good. So God created the world out of his own goodness because he alone is good and desired to share that goodness with us. And it's not out of a boredom. God wasn't just like bored, like, oh, I wish I'm lonely. I wish I could have someone. It's not a desire to manipulate, like, I'm going to give them more rules and kind of give them all these tasks that are overbearing and impossible. To, like, no, and he's not there just to be entertained. Like, oh, this will be funny. Like, let's, let's watch them dance and let's watch them, uh, yeah, go around and try and navigate this crazy life. No, it's out of goodness. And so here's where Augustine in his uh, search, for, search for God in his confessions, his own autobiography, he, he comes to this real acceptance, which is essential, right? Before I can give my life away as a gift, I need to accept my goodness. He says, quote, Before I existed, you were, and I had no being to which you could grant existence. Nevertheless, here I am as a result of your goodness, which goes before all that you made me to be and all all out of which you made me. You had no need of me. End quote. And so this fact that God didn't need St. Augustine uh, is very freeing for him, (laughs) that God didn't make it out of some lack on his own part, but only out of a a fullness did God create. And this, this really gets to the heart of trust. Trust frees the heart to live the gift of my life. That I trust God in in your goodness. I trust God in um, the the fact that because I'm here, you desire me to receive this goodness and to even participate in the goodness of life that is you. So I need to trust that so that I can receive it. Jesus comes and makes this so explicit. This is a great thing to um, take to prayer. 
that Jesus in the Last Supper with his apostles before the great betrayal, persecution, suffering, and ultimate death that he freely accepts, Jesus brings his apostles together for a Last Supper and prays. And even out loud, right? He says, Father, they are your gift to me. Sister Faustina brings us into this great meditation. Why did Jesus say this out loud? It was a prayer between him and the Father. Jesus wants us to hear his prayer to the Father, to show that we have already found a home in them. They are your gift to me. And in that same breath, Jesus requests that they may be with me where I am. It's not only that the Father gives us to the Son, but it is also that the Son deeply desires us and wants to receive us. We are not an imposition that is tolerated. We are a gift that is received and chosen. I love that, right? Can we allow ourselves to go before the Lord in prayer? And to hear, or overhear as it were, the prayer of Jesus to the Father in the Spirit, this Trinitarian experience, Jesus to the Father in the Holy Spirit prays, Father, they are your gift to me. And maybe we need to hear that more personally. Not there's, they are your gift to me. Father, he is your gift to me. She is your gift to me. Or maybe just to hear him say your own name. Father, Adam is your gift to me. John is your gift to me. Mark is your gift to me. Sarah is your gift to me. Mary is your gift to me. Fill in your own name and hear the Lord say that, right? In the intimacy of that prayer with the Father, recognizing the real cost We don't think about this, right? On the one hand, out of God's fullness, he creates. That we can say, truly, it was effortless. Because he's God, it it took no effort, so to speak. But in the way that he allows for freedom and love, there is a cost that comes at the risk of giving us the opportunity to respond And so to see in Jesus Christ, the word through whom all things came to be, who will be handed over, betrayed, and crucified, creation came at a great cost of him giving himself. And lest we would see ourselves as a burden and not worth it, Jesus comes to look at you and say, no, 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 that's that's exactly the opposite. It's actually, I'm here to remind you that you are, are worth it. You are worth the sacrifice because you're a gift to me right from the Father. What a beautiful thing. If we can accept this, this changes everything to know my goodness and to know that I am truly a gift. Now I can give myself away. Please spend some time with these invitations at the end of this chapter. That first invitation is essential for ultimate healing and freedom in my own life. None of us is a mistake, she says. We have been awaited by God from all eternity. Tell me, see what he treasures in me. I can ask God to give me a heart full of gratitude so that I can base the choosing of my life off the truth of his vision, right? Not my own vision, not my own experience. Is there something about my life that feels imposed? In these places, can I share my innermost self with him and ask for the grace to choose my life by giving a definitive yes to the gift of my life? Right, so those impositions, those are kind of the the burdens or the responsibilities or the limitations, the sufferings. Think um, Think of Chiara with the cancer, right, that I might see that being this, what defines me. Or to be able to see it in the the opposite perspective, (laughs) not as an imposition, but an opportunity to give, right? To seem to always see my life as good and worthy of being given away. 
accusation and desolation are the devil's tactics to make us think that we are not a gift. Have you ever um, heard this? said this to yourself or really it can come straight from the devil in in these moments of um yeah falling or imperfections or embarrassment or whatever it is that we can have these words these accusations come at us like i'm no good i'll never amount to anything i'm a failure i'm a burden I'm an embarrassment. And and these accusations can come at us and we can come to believe them and actually make a, a bond with them such that we start to live this lie that instead of accepting myself and my goodness, receiving my life as a, as a gift, even despite whatever the difficulty is or the, or the burden or yeah, whatever the tragedy, I can accept the lie that... I am no good, or I am a burden, or I am a failure, a mess up. And then I start to to live in a, a way that's disconnected from reality. So, yeah, have I? can I go to those places in my life where I haven't seen my life as a gift from family, parents, other authority figures, other people that I respect? And And maybe it's even just like those moments where yeah, I, I, hmm, I came to really fall short of what I was hoping to, to do or to be or to accomplish. And then I come to accept this lie that I'm no good. And to be able to bring that to the Lord and ask him to heal us, free us from that. So all of these invitations are, are really powerful and the Lord wants to heal us. He wants to heal you. And he can do it. It is Jesus who brings healing. It is Jesus who brings freedom. And may we hear, and even just the words of Jesus to the Father, they are your gift to me. And to receive that merciful love and that healing ray that wants to to set our hearts back in the full goodness, the right ordering that we are originally created to be. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The litany of trust. From the belief that I have to earn your love, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that I am unlovable, deliver me, Jesus. From the false security that I have what it takes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that trusting you will leave me more destitute, deliver me, Jesus. From all suspicion of your words and promises, deliver me, Jesus. From the rebellion against childlike dependency on you, Deliver me, Jesus. From refusals and reluctances and accepting your will, deliver me, Jesus. From anxiety about the future, deliver me, Jesus. From resentment or excessive preoccupation with the past, deliver me, Jesus. From restless self-seeking in the present moment, deliver me, Jesus. From disbelief in your love and presence, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being asked to give more than I have, deliver me, Jesus. From the belief that my life has no meaning or worth, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of what love demands, deliver me, Jesus. From discouragement, deliver me, Jesus. That you are continually holding me, sustaining me, loving me. Jesus, I trust in you. That your love goes deeper than my sins and failings and transforms me. Jesus, I trust in you. That not knowing what tomorrow brings is an invitation to lean on you. Jesus, I trust in you. That you are with me in my suffering. Jesus, I trust in you. That my suffering united to your own will bear fruit in this life and the next. Jesus, I trust in you. That you will not leave me orphan. That you are present in your church. Jesus, I trust in you. That your plan is better than anything else. Jesus, I trust in you. That you always hear me and in your goodness always respond to me. Jesus, I trust in you that you give me the grace to accept forgiveness and to forgive others. Jesus, I trust in you. That you give me all the strength I need for what is asked. Jesus, I trust in you. That my life is a gift. Jesus, I trust in you. That you will teach me to trust you. Jesus, I trust in you. That you are my Lord and my God. Jesus, I trust in you. 
that I am your beloved one. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this episode. To learn more about Dry Bones Ministries, events, and initiatives, and to support this podcast, go to drybonespgh.org. Thanks, and God bless you.